Morning, folks. Here's the situation. RV man, dude, the the digs were dope. You call me dad with getting them all ready to go. Like Mike is the ultimate dad. He had a he had a process. He had a flow. The RV was clean. It was awesome. Everybody had their own bed. I had a good time. It was it was. I wouldn't I wouldn't have it any other way. So something that we did the first night was we went to Merle's Inlet. We did the Marsh Walk. So we had dinner, and they're like we ordered some beers and. We didn't understand why we were ordering beers because Mike just said he wanted to go walk, you know, down the marsh walk. Just walk out the restaurant with a beer and a plastic cup and you can walk down the marsh walk from bar to bar and you can just walk and you can have a beer in your hand the whole time down the marsh walk. So that was a really cool experience. Uh, you know, not something that we're used to up here, being able to just walk out of a restaurant and have a beer in hand and go walk to the next bar. And there's bands playing and all that stuff. So the marsh walk was really cool. And there was actually a bet that got thrown out that never happened where Tucker was supposed to get a mullet. So I was kind of bummed about that. That would've been cool. Pine Lakes. Pine Lakes is the oldest golf course in Myrtle Beach, uh, coined the granddaddy of golf. They kind of play into that history a little bit. So they have this gorgeous, enormous clubhouse. I have no idea how many rooms are in this place. And also where Sports Illustrated was originally created. So they have a little memorial to that. The, the staff's all wearing kilts and knickers and, and classic, um, you know, Scottish golf stuff. Or as Dave would like to call it, Irish kilty sh I had, I shouldn't say the best round, but like I had the best time golf-wise on that course. That course is beautiful. The the clubhouse was like wild. It was like a castle. Yeah, big Scottish vibes. Dudes walking around in kilts, like sending people off in carts. Yeah, pointing balls out. He's like, you want that? I was like, yeah, f yeah, I want that. That guy was dope. Had some cigars. But then even with all of that. There was no sort of pretentious vibe or anything. It was very relaxed. It, it feels like a country club going in and, and feels like it's gonna be a little stuffy, but it's not at all. It was, it was very, very relaxed. It was great conditions, great golf course, great hot dogs. Um. <laughs> all right, hold on. So let's stop on the hot dogs because I know that there's a little story behind the hot dogs. Mm -hmm. I was one percent hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> After nine holes, I was feeling a little frisky. I wanted a Bloody Mary. Was craving some hot dogs. We didn't have breakfast. I'm a breakfast guy. Like, so I got some hot dogs, and they were like, like, like that f***ing thick. Like they were mad. They were thicker than this microphone, dude. Like they were hogs. I ordered two of them, and Burks unwrapped his first one and kind of looks at it. And he's like, oh. And I look at Tucker because I know he was he was he ordered one. I was like, do you just want this one? And he's like do you want me to have this one and he like doesn't really answer so i'm like all right i'm just gonna get my own hot dog and i was like i feel bad because she's already going to grab him one so then i just walked away and i just <laughs> ate two hot dogs and then drank a bloody mary <laughs> morning folks here's the situation tucker and i got a match going a point a hole with carryovers so 18 points are essentially up for grabs and we're also doing what is it called dots Sandy's greenies and birdies, Green and we're doing greenies on every hole. You got to make a par, so it basically closes the pin if you make a green regulation. How do you feel going into day two? Going into day two, um, I believe that was the day that I woke up and looked at Burke and said, "I'm feeling dangerous." Um, and I think I said I might f around and go low, and that became that became. <laughs> I didn't say it the first day. Didn't say it the first day. Pretty sure you 
said it. No, 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 I don't think so. You said it after the first 18. <laughs> I might have after the first 18. I don't know too much about what happened between uh, Mike and Dave, but I know that Tucker and I had kind of a wacky thing going on. So there was a lot of shit going on and a lot of shit to keep track of. And what does Tucker do? He goes out and birdies the first fucking hole. You mother. Fine car golf as I ever saw it. 157, close to the pin for a point. Fine. All right. That looks to me like a greenie, closer <laughs> to the pin, a potential birdie, and a hole win. Remember all that shit you were talking about? About being potential birdie, Sorry, greenie, what? close to the pin. You just lost all those po potential points. By about, about six inches. You could, you can make the birdie still. I can. That's all I got. Hey Tucker, remember when you were super confident that you were gonna beat me on this hole? Give it to him. Nice fucking putt. Great putt. I started out hot. Started out hot on the second day. Um, I was looking good. And then uh, it got real windy um, right around the turn. And that, that kind of put a damper on things. Um, I, I thought I was shooting 70s all day that day. And then threw up a couple bad scores when the wind picked up. Wind died back down, couldn't bring it back. Ended up playing that entire round and then by the end ended up all square. <laughs> <laughs> I think you owe all me a point technically because I beat you on the Part three, but we just, or not the part three. On the chip off? Yeah. I, whatever it was, it was a big waste of time. I mean, Pine Lakes definitely surprised me. There was a lot of, a lot of elevation there that I didn't expect. Cause even when you play Caledonia and True Blue, there's there's not much elevation change. So but they find a way to raise a green or something like that, but that's about it. So Pine Lakes had some really cool golf holes where you were hitting down 20, 30 yards to the fairway and then back up 30 yards to the green. Conditions were sick. The fairways were soft, but not like wet, but lush. So you just huge pelts coming up for, with every, every wet shot. The greens were big. They had a lot of complexity to them. Not expecting that. Figuring like an old golf course is gonna have small greens. Uh, it did not. It had really, really great, great complexity to the greens. It was awesome. 13, beautiful hole. You have this pond over to the right-hand side. It doesn't really affect your driver or anything, but it just off the tee looks stunning. That hole, and actually nine, I wanna give nine credit too because just water off the tee, not really in play, just off to the left-hand side. And, you know, I think I did like six iron, nine iron. Um, just just a cool hole. And, and a lot of the holes there just had some nice water features with fescue. And I, I really like that. I haven't played a lot of golf in like Myrtle proper. Only a handful. Most of the courses I've played are up north or down south. So, I mean, usually when anybody says we're playing in Myrtle, we're going to Polly's. We're going somewhere down, you know, playing Heritage or playing one of the other courses. Um, that that was definitely surprising to know, like in the heart, because that's that's Myrtle proper is a is a proper course too.